Hey, welcome back to the Yochem Lounge. Uh, in this screencast, we're going to look at a bimolecular elimination, or E2, in a cyclohexane system. So in a bimolecular elimination, or E2 mechanism, you're always producing an alkene as the product. And the mechanism has to proceed in a very uh, specific manner, and we're going to discuss that in this screencast. The specific example that we're going to look at is this um, secondary bromide in the cyclohexane system. So the first thing I want to do is identify the carbon bearing the leaving group and call that the alpha carbon. The carbon is directly bonded to that. We're going to call the beta carbons. And because they're different, I'm going to call them beta and beta prime. And to effectively solve this problem, we have to convert this flat cyclohexane into a chair. So let's make a note of that. Redraw flat to chair. And the reason we have to do that is because the proton that is being abstracted by sodium ethoxide, which is the base, has to be in a 180 degree dihedral angle to the leaving group, which is the bromide. So the reaction is run in ethanol, which is the solvent. And again, we're starting with a secondary bromide. We have a strong base in solvent. So we're going to abstract a proton to do a beta dehydrohalogenation. And the first thing we're going to do to solve this is draw this compound in the chair form. So I'm going to show this, um, the methyl group at the beta carbon first. It's going down, so on this carbon it's going to be equatorial. The hydrogen is axial. The alpha carbon bearing the bromine is on the opposite face, so it's going to be equatorial here on this carbon. The other substituent is hydrogen. And then finally on the beta prime carbon we have a deuterium atom. That's going to be on the same face as the bromine, so here it's going to be axial. So again, deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. And then finally here's our, our remaining hydrogen. Let's go ahead and put in those, those landmarks. Alpha, beta, beta prime. So as we can see, the, the beta prime and, and beta hydrogens are not in the correct relationship to do the E2 mechanism. And uh, it, it might be uh, useful to do a Newman projection to really prove to ourselves that this is the case. And so let's, let's go ahead and do that for both scenarios. So if we're looking down this sigma bond here, let's go ahead and, and draw that in a Newman projection. We have deuterium going up, hydrogen, then the ring, and then the back carbon. We have the bromine, the axial hydrogen, and the rest of the ring. So we can see that the relationship between the beta prime hydrogen and the leaving group bromine is gauche. So again, that's 60 degrees. Then if we look down the other beta carbon, we're also going to see that we don't have the correct um, orbital or relationship that we need. So we have hydrogen up, we're going to have the ring, the methyl group, hydrogen down, bromine, and the ring. So again, 60 degree relationship, again we have a Gauss relationship. So that's not what is required to do the E2. So what this problem is asking us to do is a ring flip. And so right now we are in the ground state conformation, and that means the substituents are all equatorial. If we do a ring flip, that's going to be the least stable conformation. So we can draw our uh, equilibrium arrows favoring the ground state but the reactive state is when the ring flips. 
and every substituent that is axial becomes equatorial. So now we have hydrogen, methyl, bromine's now axial, equatorial hydrogen, and now on the remaining beta prime carbon we have axial hydrogen, equatorial deuterium. So this is the reactive conformation. And again, if we were to draw a Newman projection looking down that sigma bond, we would again see that hydrogen-bromine relationship is gauche. But now when we look down this sigma bond of the beta prime carbon, we're going to see that we have the correct relationship. So let's go ahead and do that. Hydrogen's down, deuterium ring, bromine is up or axial, the rest of the ring, and then hydrogen. So now we can see we have that correct anti-periplanar relationship which is a 180 degrees dihedral angle between HCC and BR. So what's going to happen in terms of pushing the arrows with the proton abstraction? It's always good to put in your lone pairs, and your, ch your charges, and your counter ions. So this is going to abstract this proton. We're breaking this sigma bond to form a pi bond and then the leaving group leaves. So this is a bimolecular rate equation. So when that happens, we can draw an alkene in a chair with a slightly different um, form. So notice the deuterium is being retained. We have hydrogen, and now we draw the rest of our chair. So how would that look flat? So again, we've retained the deuterium, and so as a consequence of the E2 mechanism, uh, we can say that we write a note, the alkene always forms between an alpha and beta carbon. So in this case it just happened to be alpha and beta prime. So to review this has been a bimolecular elimination in a cyclohexane system in which we converted the flat cyclohexane into the chair. We did a ring flip to get the correct dihedral angle to do the E2 elimination and we see that the alkene forms between the alpha and beta carbons.